Rothamsted Research is home to the oldest continuing agricultural field experiments in the world. The Broadbought Wheat Experiment, where we are today, is perhaps the most well-known of these so-called classical field experiments. It was set up in 1843 by John Laws and Joseph Gilbert to test the benefits of different amounts and combinations of mineral fertilisers and organic manures on the yield of winter wheat. At that time, the science of crop nutrition was still in its infancy and there were questions to be answered about which are the most important nutrients for plant growth and how they become available in the soil for plant uptake. In 1843, when the experiment started, it consisted of 19 strips of wheat running the whole length of the Borbort field, each about 300 metres long and 6 metres wide. Each strip was sown to winter wheat every year and received a different amount and combination of mineral fertiliser or organic manure. I'm standing now between two crops of continuous wheat, one which has had farmyard manure at 35 tonnes per hectare every year since 1843, and another which has received no input, so it's our unfertilised control. And you can see here on the manured plot where the soil is now rich in available plant nutrients, the crop is tall, looks healthy, and um, typically in a good year would yield six to seven tonnes of grain per hectare. But in contrast, if we look at our unfertilised control, you can see the crop looks much thinner, plants are shorter, and would only yield about one tonne of grain per hectare. But it's not only organic manures that we can use to improve crop yield. Chemical fertilisers, including nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, can produce yields as good as or better than organic manures in many cases. In the early years of the experiment, weed control was very labour intensive because it was all done by hand. But then in the 1950s, herbicides came into general use in agriculture and were adopted on most of the experiment, except for one section. And you can see here what happens today when herbicides aren't used. On some plots, yields can be reduced by 50% or more. Results from the Borbork experiment, together with information from many other fertiliser trials in the UK and abroad, have been used to help develop advice on fertiliser use for modern commercial farmers. But the experiment continues to be of great interest to scientists today. Recent studies have examined how plant diseases are affected by decreases in sulphur deposition from the atmosphere and how the genes in wheat plants behave when they're given different fertiliser and manure treatments. Of course, we can't predict the future uses of the Borbork experiment, but past experience suggests that providing it's well maintained and managed and used together with new techniques and ideas, it will continue to be an invaluable resource for future generations of researchers to study the processes upon which our food security depends.